So I often get asked what gear I'm using when I'm out riding and filming, and seeing as it's been a while since the last one, here's a bit of an update for summer 2021. And also, Pando Moto just came on board as a sponsor, so a massive thanks to them for supporting the channel. I've always loved their gear. You can see I've been wearing it in almost every video for the past couple of years, so it's great to be able to feature them more prominently. There are links in the description to their products, which I'll mostly focus on in this video. So let's start with the jeans, Pando's Robbie Arm 1. In the past, I've worn their Carl Lead and Carl Devils, both of which are excellent, but these Robbie Arms have sized for a bit more of a relaxed fit. When I'm out riding, half of it will be on the bike, but I spend a few hours filming and it's actually pretty active work. You have to reposition the tripod a lot, get stuff from your bag, move around for some cutaway shots, and personally, I find these Robbie Arm jeans super comfortable, both on and off the bike. Now they're a slim fit, so not super tight, and the material used is called Super Stretch Armor Lift, so it's that give in the denim that makes them so comfortable. Now, of course, being a riding jean, they've got to be protective too, so it's good to know that they're CE approved and rated for 35 meters of slide distance. They also ship with triple flex armor for both the knees and hips. Another big plus for me is the styling with a more traditional look than the Carl jeans. Just a nice sleek finish with a few details like the label, embroidered logo, key loop, and you can turn them up for a bit of interest at the bottom with the reflective strips. Now they're not the cheapest motorcycle jeans on the market, but that super stretch armor lift means they're both comfortable and protective, and the quality is so good. This year I've been wearing them pretty much every single time I ride, just like I did with the previous jeans from Pando, and they've all held up incredibly well. On the top half, I'm still wearing a Pando Bomber Core 1, which is a classic slim fit bomber style jacket, but with a bit more length so that it doesn't ride up when you're on the bike. One of the reasons that I wear it so often is that it looks pretty good with almost any style of bike that I'm riding, be that adventure, retro, naked, cruiser, or sport. But the other major factor for me is that it's got plenty of pockets, both internal and external, which is super important as I'm always carrying loads of little bits of kit. It has some neat extra features like a reflective strip on the back, a trouser connection loop, and the lower half of the zip is shrouded so that it doesn't mark your tank. This jacket is made from 12 ounce super stretch Cordura denim, so again it's CE approved, and it also ships with the triple flex armor for the elbow and shoulder. There's a pocket for a back protector too, if you so wish. Now this has been one of my most used pieces of kit this year, and again it's still looking good after plenty of abuse. It's cool enough to wear with a t-shirt on a warmish day, but I also layer it up with a heated jacket and a windproof layer so that in the depths of winter, I've still got a good looking top layer over the technical stuff. Unfortunately, the Bomber Core is currently out of stock on the Pando site, but you can still pick it up in a couple of sizes over at Urban Rider, and then Pando should get all sizes back in stock later this summer. Now, Pando have some pretty nice stuff in the works, so we should be able to showcase some of their new products later this summer. So do keep Keep your eyes peeled for them. I've switched up my lid this year because I'm doing a lot more miles now that I've gone full time on YouTube, going to pick up press bikes or attending events. So I've kind of ditched my retro next XG100R and XG200 in favor of a showy GT Air 2. It's super comfy, and most importantly, it's pretty quiet, which ought to be much better for my ears with all those motorway miles. In terms of gloves, I'm alternating between some gold top Predators, which are nice and cool in summer because of their perforation, or some Racer Gridder 2 GTX gloves, which are a little more waterproof and insulated for when the weather is less ideal. For boots, I'm still wearing the same Icon 1000 Elsinores for adventure bikes and scramblers. These were discontinued, but I do believe that they've just released the Elsinore 2, which also looks great. And for everything else, I wear some trainer style Revit Taylor boots. Now these are more sturdy and protective than they look, but they're also comfortable enough for when you're off the bike. All of my filming equipment goes into a Tula Cova backpack. It's an awesome piece of kit that can carry a tripod, camera kit, has a general storage space at the top, as well as loads of pockets for batteries and filters. But if I'm traveling light and not filming so much, I'll just use this Krieger R15 so that I don't have as much weight on my back. In terms of tech, I'm using the Beeline Moto to navigate most of the time because it's super easy to switch between bikes and doesn't use much battery on my phone. 
I use my phone to see how my shots look when I'm filming, so it's super important to me to have a decent amount of charge and not every bike I borrow has a USB port. And then for audio, I'm still using the Moticom M Plus noise cancelling headset that I showcased in a recent video. The noise cancelling feature is a game changer for me and I've also fitted these conical spin fit buds recently for even more passive noise cancellation and a more secure fit. So I hope that helps some of you who were wondering about my gear in recent videos. Please do let me know in the comments below if you do have any questions. And again, a massive thanks to Pando for coming on board. Do check out their stuff in the links in the description.